Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2014 Ford Fusion Energy. This is a four-door plug-in hybrid sedan with seating for five. And this particular model is the titanium trim. As tested, this Ford Fusion Energy Titanium total MSRP is $42,485. And this is of course before any tax incentives. Some of the exterior features, automatic halogen headlights as well as fog lights up front. Like the Ford Escape, it has vents in front of the radiator which can close at higher speeds to improve the aerodynamics of the vehicle on highways. Now as mentioned, this is a plug-in hybrid, so you've got the outlet on the driver's side of the car and you can simply pop that open and then plug it in to a regular three-prong outlet or a 240 volt outlet. Now while you're charging it, the light around the port actually lights up to indicate the charge status. So this portion will light up for 0 to 25 percent, then this portion for 25 to 50 percent, 75 percent, and then full charge, the whole thing will light up. Now, the unfortunate sacrifice you have to make with the Ford Fusion plug-in hybrid is trunk space. It's actually about half that of the regular Ford Fusion. For some perspective, I have the owner's manual here, which I'll just place in there. And you can kind of get a feel for the size of this. Uh, basically, it comes right up against the battery, which is stored in the trunk of the vehicle. Now, this is a 7.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, which is in the trunk, and it gives the Fusion plug-in a electric range of 21 miles. The 12 volt battery is also located in the rear of the car. Underneath the trunk cover you've got your charging equipment and as you can see no spare tire. So let's have a look under the hood. So if you've never looked under the hood of a hybrid this is probably going to look a bit unique. So let's just take a moment to go over what we're looking at. Here on the left we have our engine coolant reservoir and beside it the windshield washer reservoir. Here we have the engine which is covered up here and unlike you know a lot of engines nowadays where the engine cover is pretty easily removable this is actually tied down in quite a few places so it's not a simple just pop off. Uh, we've got our engine oil cap for filling it up with oil and the engine oil dipstick. Here we have the air filter uh, which is interesting the location of it it's placed directly on top of the engine. Uh, you might think you know that might be a issue as far as all the heat from the engine going directly into the intake air uh, and you know that could be so to the right of that we have our inverter controller uh, and the coolant for the inverter controller behind the controller you can see the brake fluid reservoir uh, and then to the right here we have the power distribution box now anything in orange any of these orange cables those are high voltage lines so on the ICE side of things, there's a 2.0 liter Atkinson cycle I4 engine, uh, and this is matched with the electrical system. Now the engine itself produces 141 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 129 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. On the electrical side, there's an 88 kilowatt permanent magnet AC synchronous motor. So when the two are combined together and both putting power to the wheels, it has a grand total of 195 horsepower. So on the ICE side of things, let's take a look at how the intake air travels through the system. So we've got our intake right here, which is going to be pulling in the initial air, which will be traveling back to the air filter. From the air filter, it'll pass back up towards the throttle body, which is located just below these two pipes. After passing through the throttle body, it travels through the intake manifold, plastic as you can see here, and then into the engine. Now, like I was saying, this is an Atkinson cycle, so what they do with these engines actually is they leave the intake valve open for a short duration during the compression stroke. And what this does, and I'll explain this in more detail in a different video, but what this does is it allows for you to have a smaller compression ratio than in your expansion ratio. And by having a larger expansion ratio, you can increase the thermal efficiency of the engine and thus get better fuel economy. The exhaust then travels through the cast aluminum block and heads to the exhaust manifold where it exits the rear of the engine. The exhaust travels through a single exhaust pipe to the rear where it passes through the muffler and then exits through a single tailpipe. Now both the ICE and the electrical system are matched to an electronically controlled continuously variable transmission. So the car can actually run on just the ICE engine, just the electrical motor, or a combination of the two together which passes through the electronic continuously variable transmission and then to the two front wheels. Power is sent to the two front wheels which are 17 inches, wrapped in Michelin Energy Saver tires, 225 over 50. Same tires front and rear. 12 and a half inch ventilated disc brakes up front matched with a McPherson strut style suspension. You can see the use of an aluminum knuckle as well as an aluminum lower control arm so it's good to see that lowering the unsprung mass. Here you can see the steering linkage, we've got the anti-roll bar right here which kind of goes over that steering. 
uh, and then you also have the drive shaft right here. Also pretty cool how open everything is. Uh, if you get in a little bit further, you can see the steering linkage on the left with the anti-roll bar going over it. To the right, you can see the drive shaft coming from the transmission. Above that, you can see the exhaust. In the rear, about 12 and a half inch solid disc brakes, and these are joined with a multi-link style suspension. So this looks to be a three-link suspension, and it's fairly complex. The first link we've got up on top here, you can see. There's another link which links at the bottom, that's this black right here. And the third link is actually this one large cast aluminum piece, so it actually comes in, it's over here linked up. It also is what's carrying this spring and what's what it's mounting to. Then uh, it's linking in two locations, once at the lower front and once at the top right of the rear disc brake. Keyless entry and push button start to open the door. Simply open as you normally would and that unlocks it. And then to lock it there's a little pad right on top of the handle to do so. There's also a pad on the outside of the car for a combination lock to unlock and lock the vehicle. 10-way electronically adjustable front driver's seat with three selectable memory settings, automatic power windows for all four windows. So sitting in the interior, there's an abundance of leg room. I'm a pretty tall guy and I'm pretty much mostly leg and I've got plenty of space uh, around my legs. Also where the knees uh, are, there's no interferences or anything like that. And one place my right knee might rest, it's kind of a soft touch area, so that's nice. Leather seats, which are really comfortable. And they're also, you know, well bolstered, so you fit pretty snug in here. I like the way these seats feel. And the headrests are actually adjustable, so you can adjust them forward and then snap them back if you want them back any. The steering wheel leather wrapped and it's kind of got a nice cushion to it so it actually feels quite good. Uh, I like it quite a bit more than the one that was in the Ford Escape that I tested out. You've got automatic headlights on the left as well as your fog lights. On the steering wheel you've got controls for the different uh, energy settings, at different displays up front. You've got different controls for cruise control as well as your audio controls and things like that. Speaking of the audio system, you've got this large touchscreen here. You've got your phone up in the top left, navigation, entertainment, and climate. Uh, the system actually works pretty well. Uh, I do like the entertainment system. You know, the sound system's not too bad. Now, the climate control system is kind of a mix of this touchscreen and some of these buttons down here. So, like, for example, you've got heated seats. Uh, you also have, you know, fan control down here, which you can change on both the touchscreen or these controls down here and you can change the temperature for both the passenger and driver sides. So checking out the gauge cluster, uh, in the center you've got your speedometer as well as what gear you're in. Uh, there is no tachometer. Uh, however on the left you do have some interesting stuff. There's selectable menus which you can choose from. Uh, this one here basically shows you how much engine power you're using, that leftmost dial. Then the one beside that is the EV, how much electrical power you're using. And then you've also got like a charge status uh, as well as a charge status for your battery and your fuel gauge there on the right. There's also a trip meter which will tell you how long your trip's been, how far you've gone, what your mileage is, how many gallons of fuel you've used, and then right here, how many miles you've done in EV mode. So this is basically miles recovered where, you know, you're driving and you're going downhill or you're braking and you're recovering energy. How many miles does it give you in pure electric mode? So of the 71 miles that I've driven here, it's done 27.6 on purely electric power. And then that battery is saying that I have four miles left of electrical range before it would need to turn on the engine. On the right side of your display, you've got these things they call the efficiency leaves, which make you feel great about driving a green vehicle. And actually what they do is they kind of come back or disappear depending on how green you're driving. The greener you're driving, the more leaves you'll see. Where the gear selector is, you also have this EV button, and what that allows you to do is select between the different EV modes. So you can choose to use your electric energy later, you can choose to use it right now, or you can set it on auto where it'll kind of use a combination of EV and the ICE engine. You've got your electronic park brake right here, pull up to apply that, and then your gas filler cap, you can open that up with this button right here. Two cup holders and a center console here. You've got two USB plugs, uh, some 12 volt power outlets, and red, white, and yellow cables. Removable tray here. Now, visibility is okay. The front window, in fact, all the windows 
are kind of narrow and the front windshield itself is kind of far away from the driver where it's located. Uh, that said, you do have a reverse camera and there are also blind spot mirrors on the mirrors on the outside as well. Sitting in the rear, legroom is actually pretty good. I'm about 6'1", 6'2", and I've got the driver's seat adjusted to where I'll be driving, and I've still got plenty of leg space for my knees, so that's nice to see. Leather seats in the rear are just as comfortable, uh, and you've also got this fold down for center cup holders. Also in the rear, there's a regular three-prong outlet as well as a 12-volt source, and you also have some AC vents back here. The rear seats do fold down, so I guess you could use this space if you wanted as kind of an additional trunk. Uh, and then also right here, you have this access to the disconnect for the high voltage battery. So let's take it for a test drive. Now the first thing you'll notice is that when you push the push button start, uh, you don't actually hear engine turning on. That's because it doesn't. Uh, and in fact, it's just in the electric mode. So everything's started up and you can go like normal, but you won't hear that IC engine turning on and wasting fuel. Now with the car on, you can actually hear an audible noise in the gear selector when you tap on the brake, uh, which is basically unlocking it so you can put it in drive. So we'll go ahead and put it in drive. And then it's just in electric mode right now because it's not going very fast and there's not much power demand. And so in electric mode, it's very quiet. You know, you don't hear that engine, you just hear basically the road and the tire noise, and that's all you can hear. And you know, it's a comfortable car. The ride is comfortable, uh, it's fairly quiet, the steering feels good, and you know, if you really put your foot down, it actually has decent acceleration. You know, so in the scenario that you're merging on a highway or, you know, you need to pass a car, you do have the power that you need to do it. So rather than just talking about how this car handles in corners and things like that, I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the hybrid system and just how it makes a lot of sense from an efficiency standpoint. So one thing that it does that's pretty clever and you know this is just a hybrid thing is that if you're going down a hill you don't need to be using any gas whatsoever. It shuts off the engine and rather than just not using any gas on top of that you're putting energy back into the car because you're using that forward momentum, uh, basically all of the kinetic energy of the car and you're putting that back into the battery pack as you tap on the brakes or even if, even if you're not on the brakes. Also every time you are on the brakes you know, regardless of whether you're going uphill or downhill or anything like that, you're going to be regenerating energy. And so basically what it's doing there is just taking that electric motor and spinning it up to produce energy to put back into the battery pack rather than using the disc brakes. Now talking about braking, there is a pretty obvious feel between the electrical braking and then using the disc brakes. And it's pretty much like there's like a two setting braking. Basically, you either have light braking or hard braking, and there isn't really a soft medium in between. Now, this is a plug-in hybrid, so you know what you should be doing is plugging this in every time you go home and letting it charge up, and then the next time you use it, you've got 21 free miles without using any gas, and that makes it make a lot of sense. You know, you're not gonna have to use any gas. Say your commute to work is 10 miles, or it's a little bit longer, and you know, you've got charge stations at work. Well, this car starts to make a lot of sense because you don't have to use any fuel, but unlike electric cars, you've got the range when you need it, so plug-in hybrid hybrids I think do make quite a bit of sense from the standpoint that you want something that has long range but you also don't want to use any fuel while you're driving around the city and that option is available with cars like this. Now this car features a little brake coach and basically what that does is when you press on the brakes and you come to a complete stop it tells you how much of the energy that you could have recovered you actually did recover. So if you brake very slowly and lightly and come to a very soft stop it'll tell you you recovered 100% of the energy possible. And if you brake more abruptly you simply won't regenerate as much energy. So currently I'm going down a fairly steep hill and it's fairly long. So the benefit of this is, you know, I'm not using any gas. I know that, but I'm also recovering energy. So we'll see how much energy I recover by the time I get to the bottom with it starting at essentially zero at the top of the hill. So I've reached the bottom of the hill and actually generated enough energy for two miles of EV only driving. So that's actually pretty cool. You know, you can recover all that energy and then have two full miles where you don't have to use any gas. So let's see if I can merge onto the highway without that engine kicking on. 
and in fact I did so that's actually pretty cool now it used what it claims were those two miles of electric range in order to get me onto the highway but so far it has not switched over to the ICE so speaking of driving on the highway uh, it's actually pretty quiet I'm pretty impressed with the ride quality overall you know it's it's smooth it's comfortable and it's not very loud you don't hear too much noise from the tires and as far as wind noise there's a little bit but it's not too bad so I've completed my fuel economy run. This is a 53 mile course, primarily highway, with a little bit of city and some hills mixed in. As you can see, it achieved 44.4 miles per gallon, uh, and it's actually rated at 43 when you're in the gasoline only mode, which is what I was using. I didn't actually use the plug-in uh, portion of the vehicle, which allows you to go about 21 miles without using any gasoline at all. So really, you know, you'd be doing much better than this because you'd be plugging in your car if you were to use this, but I just wanted to compare it directly using only its gasoline engine and then whatever regenerative powers it was capable of on the road. So as you can see, 21.6 miles purely in the electric mode. That was basically because it's regenerating enough energy to do that. So that's all based on those 53.3 miles driven. It generated enough energy to go for 21.6 electric miles and within that I had 3.2 miles of regeneration that's uh, purely just when you're on the brakes I believe so overall impressions of the vehicle starting with the things that I don't like so much the thing that I would say is the biggest disadvantage of this vehicle is the trunk space you know you're pretty much sacrificing having a normal size trunk just because you're gonna have this plug-in hybrid and that's kind of unfortunate that that's how it works out uh, because it takes out so much of the practicality of this car the other thing that I think could use improvement is the brake pedal feel it just seems to be a little too heavy on either you're using the electric motor or using the disc brakes and there's not this kind of fluid connection between the two where you step on it and you know you kind of have a intuitive feel of the brakes so it takes some getting used to now some of the things that I do like uh, overall the hybrid system itself is pretty cool and I like the way that it works the fact that you can get 21 miles without using any gas that's really awesome also the fuel economy is very impressive you know this is a 4,000 pound vehicle and it's getting 44 miles to the gallon so it really shows you know how valuable that hybrid system is and how intelligent it is at recovering energy so that you can you know get these kind of gas mileage numbers this car has definitely given me the perspective that hybrids make so much sense from an efficiency standpoint. One of the other things this car does while you're driving on the highway is it'll charge up the battery uh, a little bit and then it'll shut off the engine and it'll use that charge that it's created to give you a couple electric uh, miles. Not necessarily a whole mile or you know maybe half a mile or something like that, but point is it'll shut off the engine and purely use electric power and that increases your fuel economy drastically. The interior is also pretty comfortable and there's plenty of leg room as well as headroom even for the taller folks out there. So that's another point that I'd like to just bring up and say you know that Ford did a good job there as far as making this a spacious vehicle that you can't actually fit four tall people in and stick them in the back as well as the two front seats so for those people you know who can make use of the plug-in hybrid portion of this vehicle it actually does make a good amount of sense uh, the only thing is you just have to be able to get over the fact that your trunk isn't all that big uh, and so that's just kind of a sacrifice you have to make with a vehicle like this and for the price that it costs you know it kind of hurts that you got to make that big of a sacrifice but overall the vehicle's pretty good and I've enjoyed driving it if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.